uh, in this segment, we will look at uh, characterizing the nonlinear loads, and we'll uh, we'll see that diode rectifiers uh, they appear as uh, nonlinear loads, and we need to define what the power factor is in such cases, what the displacement power factor is and what the total harmonic distortion THD is. And we'll also look at an, a, an IEEE uh, harmonic guideline in regards to uh, these uh, circuits here. So uh, just to set the stage, uh, this power electronics is really an interface between a source uh, and the load here. And uh, uh, a very popular structure that we are looking at is this voltage link structure where uh, uh, there is an intermediate uh, DC link capacitor over here and uh, which uh, sort of uh, isolates, uh, isolate is probably not the right word, but where you have uh, two converters on each side and we have been uh, looking at the switch mode converter on this side but to convert this utility input into DC over here, it is possible to use uh, diode rectifiers, okay? And uh, so our topic of discussion in this section is really when we use uh, diode rectifiers <coughs> uh, on the utility side here. So before we go into that, uh, let's uh, very quickly look at uh, linear loads. So here is an AC circuit where you, this is sinusoidal here. Uh, and uh, we are supplying a linear load, RL load as shown here, and uh, we have this input voltage phasor and the current phasor over here. So in this circuit, we know that uh, the, the power, the real power is given by the RMS value of the voltage, RMS value of the current times the cosine of the angle phi, which is the angle by which the current phasor is lagging. Right, and uh, so we can define the power factor as the real power divided by the apparent power. That is the, the product of the RMS value of the voltage to RMS value of the current, and that you can see is equal to cosine phi. So that's a pretty well-known uh, expression, and you can calculate from here that the RMS value of the current is the real power divided by uh, the product of uh, RMS voltage and the power factor here, okay? So now let's move on to what happens uh, in case of uh, nonlinear loads di like uh, diodes uh, in the front end. So the circuit that may cause this is that you have a diode rectifier here. Let me just represent it like this here, and a capacitor here, and something else happens after this here. But our uh, effort here is to look at this voltage and this current here. So we can see here that uh, the voltage is sinusoidal, we'll assume that, but the current that is drawn by this diode rectifier uh, is really not sinusoidal. In fact, it, it is uh, a pulse every half cycle, as shown here and as shown over here, right? So uh, you know, it's a, this is a, uh, a non-sinusoidal current, but it's repeating with this uh, time period T1 of this uh, voltage uh, frequency. So T1 is equal to one over F1, where F1 is the voltage frequency here. So uh, this uh, nonlinear waveform for the current that is drawn has a fundamental frequency component, and that is shown dotted, and that is IS1. So one stands for the fundamental frequency component, okay? And as you can see that uh, this uh, the zero crossing for this fundamental frequency component is over here. So with respect to the zero crossing of the voltage and zero crossing of IS1, important note of IS1, we define this phase angle phi1. And uh, so if you want to express it in terms of time, it's uh, phi1 divided by omega, where omega, of course, is 2 pi times the frequency of this voltage here. So... <coughs> Uh, the other thing we can do is we can subtract uh, the actual current that is drawn uh, from the actual current that is drawn, the fundamental frequency component, and whatever is left, let's call it distortion in the current. So this distortion current component 
we can get from knowing this IS and IS1 and is plotted over here, okay. And ideally, uh, if, we, if the current was sinusoidal, this distortion component would be 0. <coughs> so, of course, we can apply uh, Fourier analysis here, okay, and very carefully calculate uh, uh, given the, the, the equation or the expression for the nonlinear waveform what these uh, uh, frequency components would be, including the fundamental frequency. But uh, generally, you know, we can make use of uh, programs like PSPICE. That's not the only program, but uh, uh, such programs will give us what these uh, different frequency components would be. So once again, we have uh, the same plot we saw earlier for the, the dis distorted current and the fundamental frequency component and I distortion over here. So when we have this distortion in the current, uh, we are assuming that the voltage is uh, perfectly sinusoidal here. Uh, you know, we have to somehow define how much distortion there is. And uh, so we come up with an index, uh, which is called uh, this, uh, it has become quite standard, total harmonic distortion. Uh, if you want to express this in percentage, percentage uh, THD, and that is uh, the ratio of the RMS value of the distortion component of this distortion component. So it's the RMS value of that divided by the RMS value of the fundamental frequency component, IS1. And uh, uh, we will also define a term here called displacement power factor, DPF. And that is cosine of phi1, where phi1, as I mentioned to you earlier, is the zero crossing of IS1 measured with respect to zero crossing of the input voltage Vs here, between this and this over here, <coughs> okay? And since uh, all of these are uh, at different frequencies, uh, see, the, uh, this I distortion is made up of uh, many higher order uh, harmonic uh, frequencies. Uh, so we can say that, uh, we can show very easily that the RMS value of the total current which is drawn, RMS value of IS, is equal, uh, can be given by the square of the fundamental frequency component plus the square of the distortion uh, frequency component and then the square root of the sum here, like this here. So that's one expression here. And uh, the real power uh, is only transferred by the fundamental frequency component. So if, uh, of the current, I should say, if you assume that the input voltage is sinusoidal here. So only IS1 and uh, how much it's displaced with respect to the voltage waveform uh, together determine what the real power is transferred in the circuit, okay? So, <clears throat> so we have another equation here and then uh, the definition of power factor remains the same as in case of a linear load, which is the uh, total power, the real power, I should say, is the real power divided by the apparent power, uh, which is uh, you know, Vs times Is. So let me just put it here, Vs on the top and Vs at the bottom here. So this is the apparent power and this is the real power here in the numerator here. But Vs and Vs cancel out. So we, what we are left with is this displacement power factor and the ratio of IS1 over IS. And you can show that uh, IS1 over IS can be, uh, is equal to one over this denominator over here. So, uh, I, you know, in the next slide, uh, we'll write that down here, that uh, the power factor over the displacement power factor from the equation that we saw earlier is given by this. And uh, you can see here that uh, uh, we can plot this ratio of power factor to displacement power factor as a function of percentage TSD. Uh, you can immediately recognize when the percentage TSD is zero, means uh, the current drawn is perfectly sinusoidal in that case, there is no distinction between power factor and displacement power factor, and uh, that ratio is equal to one. 
but as the distortion increases, uh, this ratio becomes smaller and smaller. So displacement power factor may be high, but uh, the power factor can uh, will keep on decreasing if the distortion is increasing. <clears throat> so there are certain uh, guidelines. For example, IEEE has this guideline 519 uh, that uh, gives how much uh, the total harmonic distortion can be and also what that distortion, uh, what's the limit on the distortion ought to be for different uh, harmonic orders, okay? And that is given in this table. And, uh, you know, th th this is given in terms of the short circuit current capacity divided by the, the fundamental current that is drawn by this circuit <coughs> in which uh, the current uh, distortion is appearing. So what is the definition of this uh, short circuit current? Well, uh, you know, let's say that uh, uh, this is the supply voltage that is coming can be represented by this circuit. It's really not an ideal voltage source. It has some internal impedance, Z sub, uh, Z sub S right here. So uh, the short circuit current is defined if you put a short over here, as we have done here, what current would flow that determines the short circuit current in this uh, in the source. And uh, so the, the the limits, let me erase everything here if I can. Uh, maybe that doesn't work. But uh, the ratio of the short circuit current to I1 uh, for different values, the total harmonic distortion and uh, how much is allowed for different harmonic orders, uh, those things are given here. So well, when you, you can see that when this ratio is uh, very high, greater than 1,000, we are talking about a very stiff input voltage source where the internal impedance is very small and therefore higher uh, THT is allowed, whereas uh, when this ratio is just uh, uh, slightly over uh, 20 or less than 20, uh, then uh, actually less than 20 here, then only 5% is allowed here. So, uh, you know, not knowing what this uh, short circuit current uh, would be for a given system, quite often this number is taken as the, the limit uh, below which the total harmonic distortion should remain. So that is what is shown uh, in this slide here and uh, some, uh, some interpretation of this table uh, is given here. <coughs> so this brings us to the summary of this uh, segment. Uh, we have uh, characterized the, the nonlinear load uh, in terms of uh, power factor, displacement power factor, and total harmonic distortion. And we have also talked about this harmonic uh, guideline IEEE 519. <laughs>